Hi, Tuda family. Angie Hipple here. This is my sweetheart, Chuck. We're glad to be here with you tonight. We're going to have a fun night talking about quantum jumping. I'm hoping Judah has something clever and helpful to say about this because I do not. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's begin with a channel from Judah. We'll let them talk about anything that's important to them. Whatever is important to them is probably helpful for you. So you can join in with the energies with us together. Let's all just in our inner being welcome the consciousness of Judah and all of this group consciousness. You are included. Let's join together with the group consciousness of the Judah family. And just bring our love and good intentions. And we ask for as much as the love and source energy of Judah as possible that we can receive tonight. I don't know about you, but I need it. <laughs> there we go. Hello, precious ones. We are Judah. We are happy to be here with you in this space and time of yours at this point of origin. We are happy to meet you here. We appreciate the anticipation and enthusiasm with which you have come to this moment of your time to be with us. And yes, we join our love and heart with your love and heart, and together we are more than we are separate, yes? And this is beautiful. Together we are a larger aspect of source. And as we all come together, we can mirror more than what we can separately, for each of us is mirroring to one another and to the universe and back to source, the essence of what source is. And as we come together, then as our numbers grow, then we're each adding our individual consciousness together. And then we are a larger mirror. Yes. A larger, more powerful reflector of source energy in the earth. And so there are many beautiful spiritual families like this all over the globe. And we are just one aspect here together, the Judah family. And as we are this mirror and as the mirror grows and increases with each one who adds their own energy and intention to the family, then we are reflecting more and more of the power of the light of the glory of the intention of source. Yes. The larger the mirror, the more that you can see and the more uh, light you can reflect back. Yes. Do you remember little children in their classrooms who would bring a mirror to school and then catch the light from above and then, and then bend or refract or cast that light then in another direction, perhaps into the teacher's eye for fun or into the eye of another student. Yes. And this was a, a, a good game to play. And so this is the sort of game that we are playing here together with you. We are catching the light of source and then casting it into your eye. Yes. Casting it upon the wall to show you to give you some awareness of something you have not seen or understood before or something that could be of benefit in the living of your life in order that you might suffer less and enjoy more, suffer less and enjoy more. That is why we are here. There's always work to be done. Sometimes this vessel says to us, Judah, what do you want to talk about this weekend? Can you give me a topic, please? And she feels uh, at times that She's run out of topics, yes, to pull from the air. But we assure you that evolution and spiritual growth and ascent is eternal and never ending. It goes on beyond this life and this incarnation. And there's no end to the growth. And because there's no end to the growth, there is no end to the things that we can communicate and exchange energies around and about, yes? And so here we are tonight. This vessel has chosen a topic called quantum jumping. Yes, 
This sounds like fun. We really like this topic. And there is a lot of chatter about here and there on the internet about that. And we like that. There are so many positive aspects of creation and source and growth and assistance that are out there available for you. We like that you have a choice, that you are creating your universe. We support wholeheartedly the support of you too, because for too long, the tube, the telly, has been telling visions from the mouths and minds and hearts of corporate people who simply want to feed fear or whatever can line their pockets. And so we like this idea of the you tube in which you, you, you are determining the algorithm and drawing and attracting to yourself what is of service to you, what is of high service to you. Now we want to play along with this vessel tonight around this topic and with you. And we would encourage you to be childlike and be playful. Yes, in the Indian tradition, uh, life was called Leela. Leela, this means play, play. It's all play. It's all play, my dears. It's all play. So whatever it is that seems so dire and serious and even that your life depends on it, we will say your life depends on nothing for if you lose your life in the next five minutes, you will not lose it at all. You will simply find yourself in another aspect of life with your life continuing on. So it's all just play as we recently said through this vessel. It is like children playing on the beach in the sand on a beautiful day. And they might create many different uh, sculptures and visions and and, uh, castles and whatever is in their imagination on the sand, yes. And they understand, however, that it will be washed away for they can see as they play throughout the day that the tide is coming in, coming in, coming in and will eventually overtake whatever they have created. And this is the way of it with your life. This is why you should not take anything too serious seriously, seriously, Leela, yes, because you might create a a billion dollar enterprise, or you might create a life-saving invention, or you might create a lot of even sadness and despair and victimization for yourself. But whatever you create, at the end of, of your time, it will be washed away and come to nothing and you will begin again. Yes. So give yourself a lot of license or latitude, as is said, and play. Yes. Tonight, we're going to play around about quantum jumping. Yes. And you're going to learn that science is upholding what we have known and understood for eternity. And that is, there is no limitation of time and space. Whatever you want to create, you can create it now, even if it seems very far away from what you are experiencing in the moment. Yes? And so let us begin. Mm -hmm. Yes, let us begin. And we are here and we are going to continue along here with the vessel and interjecting. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, great. (laughs) I'm glad. I like to have the help. So tonight, we're going to talk about quantum jumping. I'm going to give you some background and a little understanding. And then we're going to, of course, talk about how you do it. And then I hope that you will do as Judah said and just play with it along with me uh, and have a good time. So um, I recently was intrigued by one of you guys sent me um, a link to catch up on some young people out there on the internet. And they have this new um, experimental catchphrase going on where they say, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. All right. So when something that happens that they don't like, they just say, that didn't happen. So it's not that they're trying to be in denial or brush it under the rug, but they're actually participating in this creator mentality 
that, um, and when they say that didn't happen, they're basically disassociating themselves from the story of, of a situation that they don't want in order to quantum jump out of that reality into a new and different reality. And so these kids, I, I love what they're doing. They're very, very experimental. I call them kids or kids to me. Uh, and you know, the question that I got from the person who sent it to me is, is this valid? And my response and Judah's response is, Hey, give it a try. What's it going to hurt? Right? So, uh, for instance, in one of the stories, um, a young person's boyfriend broke up with them and, uh, on the, with the text. And when they read the text, they said, Oh, that didn't happen. <laughs> and then lo and behold, some very short time later, the boyfriend uh, called her up and acted as if he'd never sent the text uh, of breaking up. And they were just right as rain, good as gold, and continued on with their loving relationship as if he never even sent the breakup text. So evidently, this young woman's strategy of saying that didn't happen worked. So if you guys are feeling like having some fun with me this week, we we can try that. Something happens that you don't like, just say, oh, that didn't happen. See if you can rewrite uh, your circumstance with it. So, but let's, I always like to give a little science. I hope it doesn't, I hope it's good that you guys appreciate it. And the reason why I want to do that is because we do need understanding, right? Most people who come to this work, come to this work in the yellow ray. If you don't have our realizing enlightenment chart, just email us and ask us for that. The yellow ray is the level of where we take back our power and begin to develop some understanding about how the world works and the fact that we are creating our own reality. And so because we come, most of you guys that come to this work come in this yellow ray 400 level of consciousness somewhere around in there. That is the level of understanding. It's the level of the Einsteins and Teslas and Neil Bohr's of the world, right? There's a lot of brilliance in this 400 ray. So sometimes having a little understanding can help you um, overcome some of your mental obje objections, the mental objections of your conditioned mind long enough to stick around so that you can uh, make it into that 500 range, the level of consciousness where you begin to experience all the things that we're talking about. And ultimately I share whatever I share in a scientific, more fact-based way in the, in the hopes that it will open you up a little bit more to be receptive to a full on experience of what we're talking about here. And I do get um, stories from you guys all the time of the experiences, the personal experiences you're having of divine white light energy of miracles of changing your reality. And that's what all the teaching is for. It's for that. So one of the main quantum jumps that's happening all the time, every week in the Judah family is people beginning to channel for the very first time. And many of you will say, I wish I could do that, but I don't think I can. I think I have blocks. And Judah's just encouraged me to have total trust and faith that it can happen for you now. And we go for it. And by the time the sessions ends, you are channeling for the very first time. And, um, and that hasn't failed to happen yet. So that's one of the big quantum jumps happening. Okay, let's dive in. Science first and then application. Einstein taught us that everything is energy and energy, everything is vibration. Everything is energy, everything is vibration. That's a scientific fact. It's not metaphysical mush. Okay. And, and Go ahead, Sweeney. Vibrations are measured in what's called frequencies. Good. Thank you. Vibration is measured in frequency. So everything has a frequency quality to it, a vibrational quality, what you eat, what you listen to, what you wear, uh, where you go, who you hang out with, what you think, what you feel, all of those things are energy and they have an energetic quality. So spiritual growth is a lot simpler than we want to think. Don't miss this. It's a lot simpler than you think it is. It's as simple and challenging as stewarding our inner and our outer vibration, our inner vibration, that's our thoughts and feelings and our bodies, what's going on in our temple and our outer vibrational environment. 
So thoughts and emotions, external influences on our thoughts and emotions, people, places, and things, ideas, energies, those influence our own internal thoughts and emotions. They don't have to, but they do unless we're really super aware and we've really mastered our energy to a, a, a great degree. Okay, so to master our life is to learn how to master energy. So it's not reading 100 personal self-help books and taking 50,000 courses and whatever. Those things can contribute to us mastering our energy, but all of them are that are of help, of assistance, are pointing to that. Especially mastering the energy of our thoughts and emotions and then mastering the energies that we're colliding with on a daily basis or in getting entangled with. We have so many energetic entanglements. Unless you're a hermit, unless you live under a rock, you're likely entangled with many different energies throughout the day. And it's just a fact. It's a reality of what it means to be a human being living on the earth. So we're learning how to master that. So the, the concept of quantum jumping, how does all this relate to that? It was first presented to the world by Niels Bohr in 1913 in his famous Bohr model. That's B-O-H-R. And if any of you watched Oppenheim Oppenheimer recently, the big gangbuster movie, uh, Niels Bohr was the scientist who was the hero to all the young scientists in that, um, in that film. So what is a quantum jump? A quantum jump, as Niels Bohr shared with the world, is a, a very abrupt transition. The kids these days would call it a 360. An abrupt trans transition of a quantum system that would be an atom, a molecule, an atomic nucleus, from one quantum state to another, from one energy level to another. Just an abrupt, suddenly different a different energetic state. So in layman's terms, a quantum jump is an abrupt change in your reality from one energetic vibration to a completely other energetic vibration. So in science, when a quantum system absorbs energy, and by quantum systems, we'll just be broad and say a thing. When a thing absorbs energy, there is a transition to a higher energy level, and this is called in science excitation. So an example of this would be you listen to Judah. And maybe you've had a tough day or maybe you've come, come home tired or kind of blah, and you quantum leap as you're listening into a much higher vibrational state, a much better emotional state, just like instant change. When the quantum system, when a quantum sense of, excuse me, system loses energy, then there is a transition to a lower energy level. Okay. So an example of this kind of quantum jump, this is not the kind of quantum jump we want, but it happens all the time, whether we are conscious of it or unconscious of it, whether we are conscious creators or unconscious creators. So an example of this would be you are out somewhere and you counter a really angry person right? Or an energy sucker. And suddenly you just feel exhausted, right? Or maybe you go to a meeting at work and there's a lot of arguing and debate about something, how something has to be done or whatever. And you walk out, you walked into the meeting feeling great. You walk out of the meeting feeling like they drained your lifeblood. Okay. So that's an example of a quantum jump as well, in which there is an energy loss and you're transitioned abruptly to a lower energy level. So science prior to this quantum jumping in this quantum mechanics, quantum physics world that Niels Bohr and others introduced us to, you know, the classical models with Einstein and the ones before, of course, Einstein was kind of bridging the gap and breaking through. The, the scientist was more, science was more of uh, what we'll call a classical system. And we're going to apply this to our spiritual growth. So in a classical system of science, Changes occur gradually over time, gradually over time. Okay, so an example of that would be the theory of evolution in which plants or animals evolve to adapting weather conditions or changes on the planet. 
Okay. And then scientific quantum systems, as opposed to classical, are instant. They are abrupt. In a quantum, in a quantum jump, we uh, can be emitting photons of light energy. Hang on a second. I don't want to skip something important. Emitting photons of white light energy, absorbing photons of white light energy, transferring photons of white light energy, or colliding with resonant energy. So these are the different things that happen in quantum systems. All right, let's talk about how that would apply to spiritual growth and consciousness. So a classical model of spiritual evolution. This is when we're growing or changing slowly over time. You remember we talked about uh, here on this channel that Dr. Hawkins taught us in his map of consciousness, the average person only gains five points in their level of consciousness over a lifetime. That's the classical model, slow, painful growth movement forward, right? Self-help books, courses, learning from life, seeing, getting therapy, all those things that we can do that incrementally can move us to a better feeling place or a higher vibrational energy meditating, all of that, all those practices, whatever they are. So every soul is in a process. Every soul is in this classical model. Every soul is evolving slowly, but surely gracefully or not back and toward, towards source and towards universal consciousness. Some people are more conscious than others. Some are completely unconscious. Some are slightly more accelerated because they are consciously engaged in personal growth, in understanding uh, and learning. Okay, or we can go with the quantum model of spiritual growth. We can learn to play in the quantum field and to make colossal, abrupt, instant jumps from where we are to where we want to be. Okay, so doing this is called quantum jumping. So let me give you some examples of the classical versus quantum. A classical enlightenment happens over many lifetimes with enormous amounts of spiritual effort and meditation and self-inquiry and learning lessons from life. Yes, this is what we've been taught in our spiritual circles, that enlightenment is arduous and it takes hundreds or thousands of lifetimes and only a few people achieve it. Doesn't have to be. Right. Can be a quantum jump. It can suddenly happen out of the blue. A quantum jump of enlightenment. Byron Katie is a beautiful modern example of this. She was just a woman struggling. Like I, her story is similar to mine. She, um, was at a halfway house. She was, she had been desperate and suicidal and depressed and sleeping with a gun under a bed for years and just, just not making it. She wound up in a halfway house. She was laying on the floor. She felt so unworthy. She wouldn't even sleep in the bed. And as she was laying there, a cockroach crawled across her ankle and boom, instantly she stepped over into enlightenment and she's never been the same quantum jump. Okay. So the classical system of spiritual growth says enlightened people are one in a million. And I hear and read a lot of things out there in spiritual circles to try to support this. And I'm not saying they're untrue. That's the way it has been for us. But Judah has really been pressing me to make a quantum leap here and to really stick my neck out there uh, about this quantum jump. And so let's let Judah talk about that. Yes, yes, we want the whole earth to make a quantum jump here in regards to understand. We want you to shed this uh, long held, long standing belief in spiritual circles that enlightenment is only for a select few that are on an arduous journey. Uh, for instance, much has been made and still much is made about Buddha and Jesus and Muhammad 
And there has been all sorts of structures that have been raised up around them. And these structures have only served to separate you from the truth, which is you are all a Buddha. You are all a Christ. You are all a Muhammad. You are all in a process of evolution. You can, you can, you can step over into enlightenment. You can make a quantum jump. And enlightenment is for everyone, not just for a select few. And yes, we are pushing the envelope in our messages through this vessel to help to break down this limiting belief that causes one's precious ones like you to think, oh, enlightenment is for that person and the other and that teacher I listened to and the one whose books that I read, but not for me, not for me. Well, we say this is hogwash and nonsense, nonsense. And so what we want to see is the whole planet begin to make a huge quantum jump in that there are, are more and more and more and more uh -huh, enlightened persons in your population until, as we have prophesied, in order to set our intention towards that through this vessel, that in times to come, enlightenment will be so common that it won't even be a thing. Everyone will be, for the most part, experienced life in an enlightened state as an angelic and high consciousness being. Yes. Good. So that's a big quantum jump that Judah is telling us that we want to make, that enlightenment is happening to people everywhere. I read something this week, um, a spiritual teacher saying a whole article about why enlightenment doesn't happen in the West. Well, to that, I want to say bullshit, bullshit. Okay, so he was saying that enlightenment isn't happening in the West because of materialism and greed and blah, 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 blah. Well, I want to say that could be absolutely the reason why we're going to be enlightened because we're all sick of our stuff, right? And, and so let's, be, let's also break through this sort of limiting belief that enlightenment looks like A, B, and C because it looked like this for... Uh, Ramana Maharshi, and it looked like this for Jesus, and it looked like this for Byron Katie, and it looked like this for this person and that person. Well, let's just let all of that go because it just looks like whatever it looks like. It is what it is. And for every person, it's going to be different. There might be some similarities, but it's going to be different for everyone. So quantum jump. Enlightenment can happen. Let's make room for the, the idea that it can happen for multitudes of people. Okay, classical system. Another example would be, uh, I heard today in an article, if you have a trauma, this was a psychologist, a very qualified person. I am not a psychologist, okay? But a very qualified person said, if you have a trauma bond with someone, you cannot break that trauma bond unless you get out of the relationship first. Okay, is this statement that she made true? It's probably, yeah, true in the vast majority of cases at this point in time. Is it a qualified statement? I'm sure that she's much more qualified to speak to the subject than I am. But understand that that doesn't make room for, that is a classical science model, an understanding of the world. And this Niels Bohr quantum model is everything is possible in the quantum field. So quantum jumping looks like this. You have a trauma bond with someone and your psychiatrist tells you, you got to leave them. And you say to them, fuck you. I'm not leaving. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay and love this person unconditionally. I'm going to love them unconditionally and they're going to be transformed by it. Okay. So we can quantum jump from dysfunctional to functional, from fear to love. You want to share something? Being in a relationship can be one of the fastest ways to grow spiritually. Exactly. Exactly. And if you are in a relationship where there is trauma, uh, you know, psychologists call um, this phenomenon a trauma high. We can have trauma highs from different things we go through. This is why indie ears step over to enlightenment and states of bliss in so many cases because they have a trauma and that trauma opens 
uh, an expansion in them so that they can be, tra- they make a quantum jump into a whole nother level of consciousness. So why can't that happen with trauma bonds? It can. All right. And I'm not saying you shouldn't leave someone. I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm not taking responsibility for that. But you hear what I'm saying. For some of you, you get it. Yeah. Yeah. So these classical views of spiritual growth can have these long-held ideas and beliefs that hold them into place, but they are limiting beliefs. And that's what the beauty of quantum physics, quantum mechanics is proving to us that we don't need these limiting beliefs because the possibilities are endless and myriad. So quantum jumping is manifesting a new reality in a split second of moment of time that you were, that was previously inaccessible to you, previously inaccessible to you. And this leap happens in your mind right between your two ears. Okay. So here's an example for you. I, for a while, have had a conversation in my imagination around money. And the reason I've had this conversation is because I've entered my new relationship with Chuck with a lot of baggage around money. And who knows how many lifetimes might be uh, attached to that. But I struggled a lot as a young mom and wife. Um, I worked sometimes 40, 50, 60 hours a week. I, I knew what it was like to open my fridge and there was no money, uh, no food in there and no money to go to the grocery store. I knew what it was like to not be able to repair things in my house. Um, one time when I was a young mom, I'd had the same carpet on the floor for, I don't know, like 12 or 13 years. And it was so gross and so nasty and so unhealthy that I find, and I didn't have any money to replace the carpet on my floor. So I pulled up the carpet by myself. I rolled it up and I, and I took it to the dump and I, and I got a cheap couple of gallons of paint and I painted the concrete slab on my floor uh, because I couldn't afford carpet. So I have had for the vast majority of my life, a huge poverty mindset and poverty you know, money put aside, this kind of mindset is dangerous because the mindset is there's not enough. There's not enough love. There's not enough money. There's not enough time. There's not enough skill. There's not enough talent. There's not enough, not enough, not enough. So when we have limiting beliefs around money, those speak directly to our beliefs about God and the universe and love and life itself. You see, when we have a poverty mindset about money, there's an underlying belief that life will not provide for me. Okay. Uh, there's not enough. There's not enough. So when I got in my relationship with Chuck, Chuck did not have all this baggage around money that I had. I was the one that had the baggage. So I began in my imagination, making a quantum jump. Quantum jumps happen here first. They happen in your mind. So your power tool, your weapon in quantum jumping is your imagination. So you have to get past the part of your ego mind that tells you you're being foolish and childlike and stupid by imagining, you know, all these fantastical things and just do it anyway and do it like Judah said earlier as play. So here's an example of some of the stuff that I would say to myself. I have more money. I would do this in the shower in the morning. I have more money than I can spend. Every time I spend money and I look in my bank account, there, there's more that's just replaced what I just spent and even more on top of that. And I have several streams of passive income. I do the work once and the money just keeps coming in and I don't have to keep earning it. And I just look in my account and then there's just more money there all the time, more and more. And, and the numbers keep going up. And when I die, I'm going to leave millions of dollars to the people I love and to organizations that are are increasing the level of consciousness of the earth. And these are the kind of things I would say to myself. And I got into the feeling of it. This is really important. In the imagination, let yourself feel what it feels to be like, to be a person who actually believes it. 
So you're adding the energy of your emotion, like Joe Dispenza and others have taught us and Bruce Lipton and so on. What does it feel like to be a, to be a person who believes that, who believes in abundance or whatever it is you're wanting to, the quantum jump you're wanting to make? And so I actually have been able to manifest those things. And so occasionally now when I open my phone and I check my bank account and the number's gone way up and, and, and my ego will go, wow, uh, that, that's a surprise. And then my higher mind will say, no, it's not. You just quanti- you just made that happen through your intention and your, and your, and setting your, um, and your imagination. So understand that you in your you universe, you have like a Google search, right? You can take your imagination and type something in that multiverse quantum field that's like a Google search, and you can just pull up in your imagination what you want to create. And these ideas that you throw out there to the universe in your imagination are creating your algorithm. Yes. Have you ever Google searched something? I don't know, like a certain pair of shoes you wanted. And then for like days and weeks later, every time you get on the internet, those shoes keep popping up on on your window. Well, this is how it is. If you use your imagination towards what you want, the universe will start feeding it to you almost like in an algorithm. Do you have anything you want to share so far, sweetie? So karma is erased in the now moment. So if we want to quantum jump out of our our uh, manure, <laughs> our karma manure <laughs> that we've created for ourselves, a lot of time, you know, people can spend a lot of time and effort exploring their past lives, even money. Wow. I, I saw somebody recently that is really top notch in that field. And it may be really helpful for some people, but you know, a thousand bucks to find out what happened in your past life. Well, I can tell you what happened in your past life. Are you ready? I'm going to tell you (laughs) what happened in your past life is the crap that you're dealing with right now today. What you're dealing with right now today that is stubborn, that doesn't, that seems like it just won't change. Like it's a pattern that's so resistant. That's what happened in your past life. And that's why it's why you're experiencing it still today. (laughs) So karma is the stuff in your now experience that's stubborn, that's resistant. Those are the past life things. Yeah. And so they're presenting themselves in your now moment so that you can clear them. And when you clear, this is the coolest thing Judah has been sharing with me lately. When you clear something in the now moment, You are clearing it for every incarnation you have ever had are ever having or will have. So when you clear something in your now moment, you are clearing it for the entirety of your higher self. That's so amazing. So next time you get frustrated with your, I don't know what it is you struggle with, uh, overeating or your temper tantrums or whatever, and you're just so sick of your stuff. Just know that as you progress with it, as you make those leaps, as you keep imagining yourself as your higher self, as who you really want to be. And, and when you outgrow this, you're conquering for every incarnation that you've ever had or ever will have. So in case you don't know, Judah Treats is the program where we help you get rid of these subconscious beliefs that are causing these really stubborn issues. And it works. Anything you want to share? So visualizing versus feeling. So a lot of times I hear you guys say, well, but Angie, I have this disorder called aphantasia and I don't see things. I don't visualize. And, uh, you know, I just don't really... I can't really imagine things on the screen of my mind and so on. Well, first you got to know that nobody else is either. I mean, there's very, very, very few rare psychic people that see full on movie reels in their head or outside in their vision. Very few. I don't. So understand when people say, I saw this or I saw that. Most of the time, most of the time what they really mean is I had a thought or in an impression about this or that. Okay. So no matter how 
poor you think you are in the visualization realm, if I say to you pink elephant, you can hold a thought of a pink elephant. Yes. So if you're saying that about yourself, well, I just can't visualize things. Stop saying that about yourself. Feeling the feeling is every bit as effective as visualizing. So if you're not a visualizer, don't worry about it. Just focus on the feeling. So if you want to quantum jump out of debt, yeah, let's say you've got a huge debt that you're under right now. Begin to just sit, take some time and imagine what it feels like to be debt free. What does it feel like? What does it feel like to be debt free? What are you doing differently? How is life different for you when you're debt, debt free? And just focus on not, see, see, this is the tricky part about all this manifestation stuff that I'm talking about tonight and all of the law of attraction stuff out there. You can be a pretty unconscious and unspiritual person and master the law of attraction. And you can create all sorts of things from an ego standpoint. Mm -hmm. You can create things you want. If you have the right strategies, you can create things the ego wants with the right strategies. But really high consciousness persons are not, not attempting to manifest or create things from their, that their ego wants. Instead, they're wanting to quantum jump into re the resonance of the soul. See, the resonance of the soul is different than what the ego wants. The ego wants to manifest influence, money, uh, romantic partners, whatever, whatever the ego wants to manifest. And I'm not saying it's, it's not okay to fall in love. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Go ahead, sweetie. Everything that happens to us, we manifested. Yeah. It's just we manifested it unconsciously mm -hmm. rather than consciously. Exactly. So we're all creating all the time, whether we are aware of it or not. So going back to, you know, quantum jumping from an egoic standpoint versus uh, a resonant soul standpoint. So you can master the law of attraction and you can learn how to do this quantum jumping and you can manifest all kinds of things for yourself based on what the ego wants. And you may find out when you quantum jump into that thing that it's not uh, satisfying your soul. So that's fine. If you want to do that, go ahead and do that. It's not a big deal. But understand that the really enlightened souls out there, the ones that are really serious about realizing their higher self, are wanting to quantum jump into a resonant state of the soul in which they are manifesting or aligning with what their soul wants, what their soul is here to do, right? What the soul is here to do. All right, some principles of quantum mechanics. These are really cool. So there is a, a word in science in this quantum jumping world called superposition. In superposition, a subatomic particle like an electron or a photon exists as a cloud of possibilities, a cloud of possibilities. This is called superposition. So when you're, so I say this to share this, when you are quantum jumping, you are entering the cloud, the unseen cloud of possibilities. You're, you are entering the realm of possibilities. And this is why Judah was sharing earlier, we have to be childlike, right? When a child is playing on the beach, in the sand, that child can create anything from that sand, anything. So enter into the realm of infinite possibility, Okay, the second part of quantum mechanics is uncertainty. And this law of quantum mechanics says, until a thing is measured, anything you want to know about a sub subatomic particle is uncertain. It's uncertain until it's measured. So uncertainty. So this is where we come into the the principle that Judah teaches us all the time, which is the I don't know principle. Okay, so if you really want to do quantum jumping and master the quantum field, you go into it with an I don't know mentality. So as you go into this deep, go into your meditation, open 
open to possibilities and I don't know mentality. I don't know the truth about everything. You see, what we know is what brought us to this moment in time. So if we want to change something about our life, we can't do it with what we know because what we know is created what we have. So in order to create something different, then we have to know something we don't know. So when we want, we enter into the quantum field, we are asking the universe, please tell me what I don't know. Go ahead, sweetie. You can't solve the problem you created with the mind. You can't solve the problem with the same mind that created the problem. Exactly. So quantum jumping, here we are, we're meditating. We're open to possibility. There's an infinite possibility. We're childlike. We, we come in with the mindset that we don't know. These are scientific principles here, the scientific principle of uncertainty. So um, then the, th the third part of the quantum, so let me just go over these again. There's superposition, uncertainty, and the third aspect of the quantum field is entanglement. So entanglement is all about relationship. And if you missed, we did a recent, a whole um, night on this, on energetic entanglement. So this is what science says. A pair of subatomic particles behave as mirrors for one another. When any measurement is made of one partner, the other partner will display the opposite behavior. That's really important. Listen to that again. Think about your own life. A pair of subatomic particles behaves as mirrors of one another. When any measurement is made of one partner, the other will display the opposite behavior. This is what science calls entanglement. Now, when we talk about it here, we talk about it a little differently. So when two particles are entangled, they somehow communicate instantaneously with one another. Boom, instantly even at distances of light years apart, light years apart. So science, scientists did an experiment on this a long time ago, and I, I won't remember all the details accurately, but basically what they did was they took some, some physical matter from a soldier. They took it in a Petri dish to a location very, very far away, very far away from the soldier. So there was the soldier, they extracted some blood samples from him, put it in a Petri dish, took it very far away. Then they showed the soldier some movie reels, movies that were sad, movies that were um, anxiety provoking and scary. And they checked his blood to see how the watching the movie was affecting his blood, was changing his blood. Guess what? His blood in the Petri dish, very, very, very far away, also changed, also changed as he was watching the movies. So this proves entanglement, right? So some of you will say, well, why is it when I get on a call with you and you're, I'm in Mexico or I'm in Finland and you're in, in the United States that I feel Judah do this and that and the other to me, or a lot of you are entangled right now at this moment while you're sitting and watching this video. You are entangled with Judah. You can feel the energetic difference uh, during this time. Well, this is the mystery of the quantum field. It is not bound by time and space. Not bound by time and space. So when two energies entangle, that person can be eons, light years, even in another aspect of the cosmos. And you can feel and experience the relationship, the entanglement, the oneness. Okay. So be mindful. Think about your thinking and what you're thinking of other people, because when you think certain thoughts about other people, whether you mean to or not, you are influencing them. I feel this sometimes with you guys. Um, there's someone right now that I love and I care about, and this person is engaging in remote viewing. And when they do that, it's intrusive for me and upsetting for me. Okay. So think about this for a minute. If you, if you don't want somebody putting up a camera in your bedroom and filming you, then you should not be remote viewing other people. Okay. 
If you don't want it done to you, then don't do it to other people. Very simple spirituality 101, right? Anything on that? <laughs> okay. So quantum field, what's going on? Superposition, that's the infinite possibility. Uncertainty, that's coming in to, to uh, our, our quantum processes, our, our play, our Leela, with an I don't know attitude, understanding that if we don't, what we don't know is what we need to know in order to, to quantum jump. The third aspect is entanglement. Science calls entanglement, and that's about relationship. We are one. We are one. We are all mirroring to one another. We're all mirroring with one another, and we're all entangled. Okay, and then the last one is called non-locality in science. And so non-locality is this. Tied into everything that we've already talked about, uh, this explains how the quantum field behaves as a whole. Every location responds instantaneously to every other location, which means that no event is truly local or isolated. All events are embedded into an overarching reality, which is non-local. In other words, nothing is pinned down to a specific moment in time or space. So we are unlimited by time and space. So that young girl whose boyfriend texted her and said he was breaking up, and then a few minutes later he called up as loving as ever and acted like, you know, he'd never sent the text. She was able to quantum jump into a new and different time and space. Good for her. So let's play and practice. So two last keys for mastering these quantum jumping. To get really good at it, you need to release subconscious beliefs that are in your way. And we've devised you to treats for that to happen for you. And the second key is using your imagination. And in the True You Accelerator course, there is a whole week called Imagination Meditation that will teach you how to get really good at this quantum jumping stuff. So release your subconscious beliefs, meditate, and when you get into the sweet spot in meditation, let your imagination run wild outside of time and space, outside of time and space, creating what you want. Okay, it's been a fun night. I hope you had a good time. We love you. Do you want to share anything before we go? We love you so much. We're thankful for you. Do lots of great quantum jumping into new beautiful realities of your own design this week and send us the stories. I do want to say that I do get so many lovely letters and comments and emails. I can't answer them all, guys. I just can't do it. If I did it, I would quantum jump into total burnout. <laughs> but I do love you, and I'm excited and thankful for all the good stuff. And when you're hurting, we feel that too. We send you our love and prayers. And everything we do at this channel is to to with our very best intention to give you tools that you need for when you are hurting or distressed in some way. So even though I can't answer each of you specifically, book a session. If you can't afford a session, dig into these videos. I promise that Judah and the universe will lead you to the answers that you need if you really, really want to know them. Okay. All right. I love you guys. See you next week.